And then when I got in high school, it was George Strait. And it was like a light bulb went off. <laughs> That's what I want to do. That's where I'll be. It holds the answers to all my dreams. Hello, everybody. My name is Steve Helms, and this is my History in Motion. You're always from Cleveland, Texas, right? Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I know you live other places. You live in New Mexico and Fort Worth, but here he is from Cleveland, Texas, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Steve Helms. I was born and raised in Cleburne, Texas. Graduated high school there, grew up playing music there. My dad was Leon Helms, and my dad had a record deal back in the 70s. He did a little 45 record, and so I, I kind of grew up in the music because of him. Right out of high school, golly, he was on a, on a van or a bus going down the road, you know. I tried college for a little while. And that lasted about two or three months, and it just wasn't my thing. I was going to play music. I still feel the same. I ain't going anywhere. Once I really decided that, yeah, I was gonna play music, I had some buddies in Cleburne, Jeff Gilbert and Jeff Reagan. And we were all, I think I was in the sixth grade, they were in the seventh. We all got drum sets for Christmas, all three of us. We were gonna form a band. And I, I don't know, hell, I guess we were all gonna play drums, I don't know, but we all went to Jeff Reagan's house and it took us about 30 minutes to realize that Jeff Gilbert was gonna be the drummer because he was the best one. To this day, he still plays drums for me, it's crazy. It's been 40 plus years, Jeff Gilbert still plays drums in my band. We decided then that that's what we were gonna do, we are gonna have a band. So Jeff Reagan and I got guitars and that's when I got my first electric guitar and we started playing Eagles tunes. That's another big influence. It was from Merle Haggard to the Eagles and then when I got a little older, it was Kiss and then when I got in high school, it was George Strait. And it was like a light bulb went off. <laughs> That's what I want to do. That's the guy I want to try to be, you know. And then I think everybody that played music back in those days, if that's, you wanted to be George Strait. Cowgirls too, Green Hall and Billy Box, Tex, Mex and Mark. The one song I guess that everybody knows me from and that, that is sustained and kept me a career going is Nowhere But Texas. Uh, I co-wrote that with Kyle Level and David Banning. It was one Sunday afternoon, Kyle and I were, were uh, scheduled to have a writing session at his work in uh, Addison. And uh, we're going through our stuff and, and he said, hey man, I've got a couple lines in a chorus and here's you know part of a melody, what do you think of this? And, and on his piano, he was like, Nowhere But Texas, that's where I'll be. And, uh, it really hit me. I was like, Kyle, that's awesome. We need to finish that. We need to write that. That, you know, and uh, and we did, you know. And it's been played at every uh, Rangers home game for 14 seasons. It's a, uh, it's kept me a career. I mean, it's yeah, it's that's the one song that's done it for me. I mean, when people see me, that's what they shout out. Hey, do nowhere but Texas, you know. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a godsend. You know, I thank Kyle for pitching that to me. Uh, we got some great music for you tonight. I, I get asked a lot about what what is the Texas country, you know, or Texas music scene, the red dirt scene. For me personally, it lets guys like me that have been doing this a long time, that Nashville would have shoved out the door 20 years ago. It gives me an opportunity to still make records and still play, and people still want to. They want to buy your t-shirt, they want to wear your hat, you know, they, they, and they buy tickets, they come see you. But it's, it's really cool for me to see like traditional country coming back. I mean, golly, however many years ago it was when Nashville kind of made the turn of, we don't sell CDs anymore, people download. And I, and I honestly think that's what kind of started and caused it, was that the purchase of CDs and albums declined because you could download and stream. Well, the ones that were doing that, were the 13 year olds to the 28 year olds or however, whatever that age group is in there. And the older generation really didn't grasp the, the streaming thing yet. So Nashville had to change their music to cater to the people that were actually buying their music. And, and I get it, whether you like it or not. Me personally, I didn't like that kind of music, but that's what was selling. I mean, I, they had to, it's a business. So, but for me personally, it's really cool to see all my buddies and, and that traditional thing coming back. It's real country music, you know? And again, wh whether you like that or not, it, at least they're trying to keep it alive, you know? And that, and that gives me an, a job, a, a, again, you know, it extends my career. People still want to hear that kind of music, you know? And that's what we play. Yeah, you did. 
But I've got my trusty old umbrella. Growing up, thinking back on, you know, when we, you know, 20, 25 years old, what we were doing and playing, we were, and we were traveling all over the country back then, playing the bigger clubs, but it, you weren't playing original music back then. You were doing top 40. I mean, that's that's what the venues wanted. They, these people want to dance to Brooks and Dunn and Garth and George. They don't care that you wrote a song. So you had to keep playing cover tunes, you know, and every now and then you'd try to slip an original in there. But you always dreamed of, you know, ruling the world and being George or Garth or, you know, and now where I'm at today in my career, I think back, we did okay, you know? I mean, I'm 54 years old and golly, got a bus and a trailer and we're, schedule's full and we're playing, people are downloading our stuff. They're, I'll go somewhere and see somebody wearing one of my t-shirts and it, yeah, I mean, you, just, you feel very blessed. We, we may not be doing the numbers that some of those other guys are doing, but yeah, I mean, the car payments are, are made and the rent's paid. And so yeah, I feel very, very blessed and, and honored to be able to keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah, no, wherever it takes.